is such a pleasure to be here today. Um, this is a really exciting moment for me because I actually have only been in the virtual reality space for a little more than a year. And um, the reason that I actually first got involved is my uncle, who thank God is totally okay now, um, had a really bad bout with cancer and was in long-term rehab. And my family is very supportive. My dad's in the audience here, so we're you know always roll together. Um, through good health and bad. So again, my huge Persian family went to visit him um, at Spalding Rehab, which is an amazing rehab facility in Boston, top of the line, really good doctors, really great facility. But I couldn't help but notice that in the absence of the rehab sessions and the time with family, you're just left alone. The only thing that you have to give you any hope is this TV, which is from the 90s. That's not even a plasma. Um, and I, yeah, I know. And I left that day thinking, you know, what happens to people that don't have family with them? What happens to people that don't have the resources to see beyond their current situation? And um, concurrently, I actually was on my way to London because um, I used to work for TED Talks, and I tried my first ever virtual reality headset uh, while I was there, which was the Google Cardboard, um, which now that I've tried the Oculus and the Vive is not as impressive to me. But the minute that I put that on, and it was this experience where uh, a train was coming and it hit you, and then you became a baby. So it was like super trippy. Um, <laughs> but I totally bought it, and I said, oh my gosh, I want to put this in rehab centers. Um, and I want to use virtual reality to make people happy. Um, and I basically said, all right, I'm going to leave my job at TED. And I don't know anything about VR. I don't know anything about VR development, but this is what I want to do. Um, and fast forward, I ended up meeting um, an amazing group of people. Our CEO, Ben Brown, is in the audience right here, um, who are very passionate about using biofeedback to reduce stress. And so we got together and we said, can we combine proven biofeedback techniques with the power and immersion of virtual reality and teach people how to reduce their stress and increase their happiness and mental well-being in a whole host of situations? So um, I'm really excited to share with you our journey and our product today. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, regardless of whether or not you have a health issue, stress is something that affects us all. Um, an amazing stat is that 90% of doctor visits are stress-related in some way. And amazingly, stress is undefined, unmeasured, and untreated. And until we had really sat down as a company and thought of that, I didn't really spend much time thinking about that. I know that I'm stressed, but when I'm stressed, I have you know, some basic coping mechanisms, but no way to measure my stress, no way to know from week to week if I'm getting more stressed or less stressed, and also no way to know if things that I'm doing, whether that's meditation, exercise, um, gratitude exercise, all of these things that we're told to do, are they actually working beyond you know, what like my Apple Watch can tell me or a Fitbit, which doesn't really target stress. So as a company, we're really interested in, first of all, measuring stress and giving you tangible tools um, to nip it. So, Another reason why stress is obviously really important is that stress can affect your mental health. Uh, Short-term stress can be bad, but it also can be good, right? A little bit of stress can get us going. But chronic stress has been critically linked to depression and anxiety, and 350 million people suffer from this worldwide, and yet over 50% never seek treatment. Um, and that's highly problematic, right? But what a lot of people do to distract themselves and to give themselves some happiness in the situation actually get into gaming. So we thought that there's this really cool opportunity to design games that are fun and engaging and something you would want to do anyway to take a break from the day, um, but also actually measure your stress levels and prove that you can decrease them. So we created this virtual reality kit system, and our software includes immersive VR training environments. So we have a host of beautiful nature environments. And then we also do real-time biometric data capture and analytics. Now, this is the most exciting and important piece here, because unlike other relaxation VR experiences you may have done, the current ones don't actually measure your stress um, or whether or not they're actually decreasing your stress and increasing your mental well-being. And we're really interested in doing that. So the way that we do that is through wearable device integration. Um, and this has been a really special team to work on because we have an amazing data scientist from MIT, Toby, and our CEO is also really passionate about high quality data. And something I didn't know until I came to this company with this amazing group of people is that something like your Fitbit or Apple Watch isn't actually capturing the level of data you would need. So all of our data is clinical grade. Um, so hospitals can use it and it's capturing your data up to 10,000 times a second, which is really what you need to get the quality that we're looking at. Um, and we do this through finger sensor, polar chest strap, 
and are also looking at devices like the Empatica, which is risk-based, but is FDA approved for medical use cases. And we also are in the process of creating a stress measurement algorithm. So we're recording and analyzing this bio data to prove that you're decreasing stress over time and also providing you with a web dash that you can look at and say, what was my score today? What is it in a week? And then ultimately, have I improved my stress over months or a year? And as you can see over here, um, your, for your heart rate variability, which is one of our main metrics, and I'm going to tell you more about why this very simple measure is actually really powerful. Um, this right here is a high stress pattern. But you can see that if you can get it into the low stress pattern, that is what all of our experiences and exercises are really moving you towards. So we look at HRV, which is our biggest metric, and we also look at sweat and temperature, which is obviously indicative of your internal state. Now, in terms of why HRV matters, anxiety disorders are heavily linked to it. So if you have low heart rate variability, you are much more likely to have depression or an anxiety disorder. And monitoring heart rate variability over time um, to detect changes in cognitive and mental health can lead to early detection of disease. So one of the things that we're interested in doing is if people enjoy our games so much to do them for 10 minutes a day, over a year, we can get the kind of data that might eventually be able to predict, is this person likely to get depression? Are they, um, you know, has it been a really stressful time during finals or during work? What's happening to their physiology in these games? And can we send some alerts to say, hey, you're really stressed right now, you're getting into a danger zone, you know, take some you time. Because um, a lot of us, you know, we're high performers, we want to keep pushing, but sometimes you need a little extra push to say, like, I really need to take better care of myself. Um, and also, another interesting use case is if you track HRV before and after starting a new medication. So for example, let's say that you have just had a surgery and you're in cardiac rehab, we can show if your medication is more or less effective or is actually causing adverse effects. Um, so not only are these games fun and decrease your stress, they're really powerful tools for doctors and physicians that want to learn more about your physiology. So this is a, a demo of one of our games. Here, uh, the girl is going to go through the pacer and then go through an experience where as she regulates her HRV, she's actually able to levitate, which we find is one of the favorite experiences um, of people that go through our product. And what you saw in that blue line was actually your heart rate uh, variability in real time. So you can see if you're doing the breathing correctly, right? We're taking the sort of mystery completely out of any of these training tools because we want you to see it, to believe it, right? Um, and we found that that has been really effective. I personally didn't really ever buy into meditation so much until I started using our product um, because I said, well, how do I know that it actually works, right? And so even someone like me that's working on this product can see that. And I find that because I can actually see my data and see that it's changing, I'm much more likely to do it because I know that I'm making a measurable difference and that all of the effort I'm putting in is resulting in something tangible. Um, and then also in terms of why VR, and this is a really important question, even though obviously I hope everyone here buys into it, you know, we're all um, VR for change. It's actually really important for this specific type of training. It's not the type of thing where you'll get the same results with a pacer or a computer screen, because with VR, it's totally judgment free, right? You can totally escape where you are, and also in some ways, escape who you feel you are for the day and be in a totally different environment. Um, it's also fun and playful, right? It's, we don't want people to use this product just to help themselves because, you know, as we know, you don't always do something just because it's healthy. It has to be something that you want to do, and VR really helps with that aspect. And it's also engaging for all ages. We've had our product used from like five-year-olds all the way to 80-year-olds, and they all learn the same skill, which is how to train their physiology to work better for them and to better manage their stress. One of our favorite quotes was from a five-year-old that we asked her, what do you think? What, did you like it? And she says, yeah. Like, and she went to her dad and said, dad, I just learned how to control my stress with my heart rate. And it was amazing that a five-year-old <laughs> came out with that. And I was like, whoa, that's our new slogan, because before I wrote it, and it was complicated. <laughs> so that was amazing. Um, and also, this picture, actually, a few other speakers have used it, which is hilarious. But 
I mean, Obama and Angela Merkel, right? Like, look at how happy they look. I'm sure it was a super stressful place wherever they are, but VR brings people together on all sides of the aisles and makes people happy. It's fun, it's playful, and that's what you want people that are struggling to feel when they do something, right? If you're in a hospital and a doctor is in front of you saying, do these breathing exercises, there's no way that that's gonna be as effective as saying, hey, here's this device, take your time, escape your environment, and then at the same time, do something good for you, but that's not what we lead with. And the effect of that has been amazing. And as VR gets better, we're just so excited about how much powerful that's even gonna be um, more so. And then in terms of why I think Core Sites is really special is that we make the invisible visible, right? We're giving you a glimpse into your nervous system so you can start to make very impactful changes. And then you can verify that those changes are pushing you closer to your goals. And that's really the crux of the experience and product that we're trying to create. In terms of our use cases, um, there's been quite a few. So employee wellness, companies like WeWork and PwC have been interested in this because they have people that are working really long hours. And so being able to take five minutes out of their day and take a break, there's been a lot of interest in that space. Physician wellness has also been a fantastic avenue for us because doctors have one of the highest stressful jobs but they actually have the least amount of attention oftentimes. We've talked to certain groups that don't do any physician wellness in their practices, and this is something that they can immediately implement that again is quick, it doesn't take a ton of time out of your day, and you see the data too. So we can't sell you on something that's not happening. Um, and then what has been so amazing is that the doctors love it so much that they want to use it with their patients. And that is just the ultimate validation for us. Um, and then student wellness, this is an area that we want to get more into. It's particularly a big passion of mine. Um, a lot of students actually, one of the number one reasons students in high school or college will drop out is because of anxiety and depression. Um, and oftentimes, you know, not everyone's the type of person that's gonna go out and seek help, but if they have a VR game that is fun and they can do in the, their dorm and it's a safe environment, but it also helps their mental wellness, um, I think that's really important. And it's also important for universities to see this data, right? If you see that there are weeks throughout the school year that your students are much more stressed and it's affecting their performance, let's fix it, right? If we have the data, we can actually create changes because I'm a big believer that a lot of stress actually in life should be avoidable. Um, but you're not gonna be able to really convince people to make those changes unless you say, here's the stress that's happening, here's why it's affecting your students. Hey, if they drop out, you lose money. If your employee burns out, you lose money. It's unfortunate that that's the world that we live in and sometimes people need that data to make a change, but we're happy to provide it if that means that we're all gonna be able to live happier and less stressful lives. Um, and then simulation monitoring. So groups like Boston Children's Hospital have amazing simulation centers where their doctors do surgery simulations in VR. Um, and we can also do biometric capture on existing VR content, uh, which is really interesting and a cool use case of our web dash. So even when we're not creating the content, we can still add value by providing data on your experiences, whether that's making your simulations better or simply knowing if your VR 360 film has the right level of emotional impact you want and when. Um, so we're really always actively exploring those um, avenues. And then the most amazing team of people I have ever worked with, I learn from these guys every day, um, Ben Barone, who like I said is there, um, who's our CEO and biometrics expert, and is thinking about applying biofeedback, which has been around for thousands of years in a way that never has been applied. Um, so this whole thing was originally his idea and it's just been an honor to work with him. Um, and then we have Kevin and Shay who used to work for Deloitte and so they have a lot of experience doing scale, um, which has been great because as a lot of you guys know, VR is new and so doing VR as a business, it's a whole different ball game and so um, learned a lot from them and then that's me. Um, and then we have Toby who is uh, at the bioinformatics lab at MIT. So he has designed all of the web backend and is also actively working on implementing machine learning and AI into our product. So we're doing experiments on being able to provide you the best content, um, not only to increase your training results over time, but also to keep you engaged. And then we have Anish who is a fantastic VR AR developer. He's still a student at Northeastern about to start his next year, but um, we always joke that Google is like always knocking for him. So. Very lucky to have him on the team. Um, and yeah, that's me and that's Corsair. Thank you guys.